It's the one-two punch, why all your small mom and pop shops are going bye-bye. Baxter here. And Jonathan. Casino Guitars come at you hard and fast one more time today. Thanks for joining us. Um, we we're talking, there's a lot of shop closures has been happening. This Recently, we've seen some on Facebook, some shops we didn't know, we knew some shops. It's definitely a huge bar. Yeah. And people are like, Baxter, Jonathan, why are these shops closing? And when are you guys going to close? <laughs> why aren't you? Well, we're fortunately doing really well still. Uh, uh, wood? Yeah. I'm trying to find wood anywhere. I think I'm sitting on wood too. That sounds wrong. But um, no, it's it's really, it's a it's sort of a one-two whammy. There's two things. Um, a, there's the mega sellers that they're competing with in a whole different way, Sweetwater. Not GC in the same way. It's mainly Sweetwater. But um, so, yeah. And then um, B, it's the manufacturers now, the direct competition. And so that's a huge, huge issue. People are like, oh, it's only a small percent of their sales. That's not the way business works, unfortunately. It changes. And as you build your business plan for the future, you have to adjust to that and be ready for what's coming. Yes. And so we've already done it. We sort of said, we're, we're okay, but a lot of shops have not prepared for it. So we'll dig into a little bit. Sweetwater is the reigning king. Yes, absolutely. Like, and they are the reigning king for a reason. They are fantastic at what they do. They have great um, efficiency. Yep. The You order a product, it's usually shipped and out the door that same day or the next day at the latest, it seems. The customer service is pretty good. We've noticed a little bit of a dip in it from our consumer base talking just ever since the transitions have happened from, you know, the original founders passing off to the equity of privacy. Um, but there's a cost to this efficiency too. It's not just in, in the, it's, it's, this, it's akin to Walmart, I'd say. I think so. I think that's we, good. We, we all sort of, we all sort of wanted that. You know, we want it easy, we want it cheap, we want it fast. I got we went so with Walmart, which is great. I was at Walmart the other day. I had to buy a I, I couldn't get down to the drugstore. I mean the hardware store in time before it closed. I finished work and it was closed when I finished work, but I needed to get a wet dry back. Yeah. yeah so Walmart's open twenty four hours. Walmart. But you know, we've sacrificed um our American manufacturing for this. So we it's all Chinese built products usually in there. We've a fact we sacrificed all the mom and pop shops that used to be in our small towns for this big mega concrete yep. center block. Yep. And you've, we started to see that with guitar shops, the small ones closing. And then people will complain like, well, my mom and pop doesn't have any good stuff. They can't afford to carry it anymore. Right. You know, it's just, it's not, because they're, they're, they have to buy all that. It's not like the company gives it to them to warehouse and sell. <laughs> you pay just for hang on to this until you sell it. When you say, I want to have like, you know, five Gibson Les Pauls, you buy five Gibson Les Pauls. If you, you know, and you have to hope that those will sell to your customers. Yeah. Otherwise, they're sitting there collecting dust and breaking strings and customers come in and chip and ding them. I mean, that's, and I'd say, you know, like uh, Walmart is great and it's very convenient. And I, like I, you know, we go to Walmart all the time, but I think most people don't even realize what they've lost at this point. Like, because we're a generation past that. No, because I remember when uh, Walmart came to my small town when I was like, I was the biggest thing. We're like, oh my God, Walmart. Like I showed up dressed in a suit with a clipboard and walked around acting like I worked for Walmart. When I was a teenager, clearly they must have known I was, I was like going around like, great job, Sam. Yeah. I just, it's because it's a big Mr. deal. Walmart, Walton, is that you? Walmart came to town. <laughs> I was excited. No, but it, it's, we've all, we've all sort of traded in. It's like, it's like Pink Floyd. It's just like, you know, wish you were here. Those lyrics, we trade a little bit in. Well, there's, and to be fair, like there probably were, pl I know there were little like dying towns where Walmart, there was a void, you know, it wasn't like they, in every town they came in and shut No, down some the, places they, they, they brought place. some, they brought some great there, things. There was a void there. And this, I think the same thing is true with Sweetwater, but I do think we're to the point where it used to be GC that closed down all the little mom and pop shops in a, in a place. Well, GC's in a lot of trouble uh, right now. So they're right. But now, and I don't think necessarily this is Sweetwater's aim, but they're probably the ones driving out a lot of a lot of small mom and pop. Well, it's just tough. There's more coming. So now the other aspect within Sweetwater that you know is part of all of our businesses now, but financing. Yeah, financing was not a thing for a long time in the guitar universe, and during the um, I guess the pandemic is when it kind of went hyper speed financing. Right. Rate money was free. Rates dropped like nothing. You were getting 48 months free financing. Zero interest. Yeah. Now we're down to 24 months. We've noticed it's all dropped across the board. 
you know, Sweetwater's offering like, you know, 10% back if you use the Sweetwater card as well. Right. So they can get you on that because they're going to make interest rate points as well because, you know, they're they're betting on you. That's all credit card groupings are betting on you to not pay your bill on time. Yeah. Like, that's I have, the interest rate. You know. I have friends that work in that industry and that's that's the customer they want. They don't want you to pay your bill. They don't like me. I pay my bill on time immediately. I don't like to pay any interest rates. Yeah, I just put mine on auto. So it's just there. I don't want it's to. Done. I'm horrified of it. You know, the guitar boom, like with the cheap money, free money, financing everywhere, it, it happened in a sort of, it sort of helped hyper fuel. Like these shops are losing a huge percentage of their sales now. Yeah. The small guys. It just, it changes. And I mean, I know how it is. You know, like when you, <laughs> you need something, when you love something like that and you're, you're, it's a little tight and you're like, wow, I could afford this thing. Sixty dollars a month for three years or whatever—that is really tempting. When the other option is have all the cash in hand or or whatever and walk into a place and it, and and do it. I so I I, you know, I get it. No, and like we've all financed stuff. Like it's not not that. It's yeah. just it's just changed the way business is done. Like Absolutely we have people has. finance with us, but it's not at all the same rate. Most of our customers do actually pay for the the guitar, like themselves. Yeah. They don't do finance. They, like, the large percent is like ninety something percent. Yeah. You know, I checked with most other shops, a lot live in there. Some of the other bigger indies have a higher level of financing, but that's, you know, that's just part of the nature of the business as you approach Sweetwater. <laughs> as you approach, sweet, do you think it's also as you approach like those like bucket list kind of instruments, like where we're not talking about Squires or like, you know, right. uh, standard fenders, we're talking about custom shops and Murphy Labs and vintage, you know, private stock. Yes. Like, I, I don't know. And, and most of the customers buying those can't afford to pay for them immediately. They just it just works better for them to do it to through do financing it or do it through a credit card private financing and because they're getting points or it just makes sense to spread it out, A to not piss off your wife, or B just to be financially savvy. Yeah. Now it's um now the now the number two whammy besides like the behemoth that is Sweetwater, which again, we all shop there. We're part of it too. Like we like we just bought a bunch of mic stands from Sweetwater. That's what we do. Because we like Sweetwater. Because where else you gonna pop? <laughs> I know. It just it just makes sense. You know, it's like we're 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 part of it. It's not. But the other one, one to whammy is the manufacturers. Yeah, the all the guitar makers and the pedal makers and the amp makers that we work with have all started going direct. And this is that final one to whammy for a lot of shops that have not built an online presence. Mm. And like, well, and then the manufacturers and I've heard this at these meetings. Like, well, if you didn't do it, it's your fault. I'm like, whoa, because this shop helped build your business for the past 40 years. And it might be an older team that's been running it, but there's like out with the old and with the new, which is us, not us, but I'm talking about the manufacturers is what they're talking about. And you're probably thinking, well, not that many people are buying direct. They're not going on the website, but we've looked. And once people realize like there are literally guitars on certain websites that are cheaper than we can buy them for wholesale that you can go and buy. Most well, well, that that's 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 the problem with like right now. Like, well, we'll get in. I'll talk about Fender right now in particular. Like, they did they had their over manufacturing problem. We've talked about it. Whereas, like you know, they let you know Guitar Center Sweet Art and Toman order a ton during the pandemic. We have a whole video on this. Then they cancel all those orders because like, hey, we see it slowing down. And Fender's like, crap. We've committed to build these overseas already. These guitars have now hit the shores. They have warehouses full of them. They got to dump. I Press get their way down. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're off from on their website. So if you want like a Fender anniversary squire, like go to fender.com. Oh, that's the Fender. place to get yeah. it. I mean, I'm telling you to go to like to the devil in a weird way as far as because it's not what we want. Well, the problem is, is there's a mentality that's amongst dark. all of the guitar manufacturers that it's every man for themselves. Yes. So it's the, there should never be a mentality of, of, Fender or anybody else saying, well, if you didn't hop on board with the internet, then that's on you, right? They're supposed to be our partners. They're supposed to be doing things to help us thrive. If they're not, they should be training guitar shops in how to stay ahead so that they don't get into this. I mean, nobody, it's not good for any brand when you have a Fender dealer or a Taylor dealer or a Martin dealer that closes down and then a new one pops up. 10 miles down the road. That's not good for the brand when right. they need stuff to constantly open and close. Well, I think you made a good point too. Again, that's Derek behind the cameras. Um, the guitar shops, believe it or not, we actually all do communicate. 
Like yes. we actually we are like this cohesive sort of. We don't have like a unionized thing. We've talked about doing it, and we're sort of working on some things. But we do communicate, and we see what the problems are. We try to help each other. We send customers to other shops every day. It's part of what literally we do. every day. Every day, you're like, nah, of course you don't. But no, we we no. really and other shops send customers to us sometimes. It's part of it. I met some of my dear friends through. I remember Paul Tobias at Tobias Music up in Downers Grove, Illinois. And great shop has sent one of my dear friends, Z, the Dolphin Trainer, to us. Back when like sharing guitars were like a thing, like that's right. That's, that's how that's we met. It. I forgot that. That's and then true. we got to stay in bunk beds together in Anaheim. <laughs> Ooh, he's so soft and spelt. So but strange. no, like we do all communicate. It shouldn't be like you know, well, Fender's doing this and Gibson's doing this and Taylor's doing this and Martin's doing this. Like they need to understand like what's good for the goose is good for the gander and like the whole industry. And, like it used to be that way. Like I do, I do remember like you know when when like Bob Taylor would help out other guitar manufacturers, yeah. like Martin. You know, or like, you know, or like Loudon or Breedlove. Like that dude is awesome. Like whatever you think about Taylor guitars or not, like Bob Taylor, is, he's kind of a saint in the guitar game. Yeah, it really is. Like he's an environmentalist. He's saving like African communities. He helps other guitar companies. He built some of the best guitars ever made. You know, bring back Bob. Bring him back. Just always keep him around. Keep him in your house. You the book too. Yeah, bring him back Bob all the time. Bring back Bob. Bob. But uh, no, it, bracelets. I'm wearing them. BBB. It, it's tricky, and that's the thing. A lot of these shops have to see when their manufacturers are now decided to go against them directly. They see the writing on the wall. We don't because we're kind of stupid, and we like to run through those walls. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, we've built this thing, and we're, we, we, we like a challenge. We're different. You know, we are, we are built a little differently. I don't know. It's just I think we can beat them. We're going we're gonna, to – because, like, I still look at them as our partners, and they're just having a moment of temporary insanity. And they will come back to proper thinking one day and like, wow, you know, it's, was that you one percent, did that? Was that one percent <laughs> sales of our entire, like our overall market? Was it worth alienating our entire dealer market, upsetting this? You know, I don't know. I, I was laughing then, but, but then maybe people don't care though. Cause I was looking at the forums and the Taylor guitar forums and I saw people, more people were upset, raising hell and raising cane over, they changed the Diodario strings versus when Taylor decided to go direct. It's a big deal. You know, that, that was more like, oh, well, that's not a big deal. It doesn't affect me. Not much sympathy for a shop that's been around and selling Martins and selling Taylors that had to announce that they were closing. There's very little sympathy. No, are you talking about the one, the one in Arkansas? Yeah, it's very surprising how no. little people sympathize and yeah. cared with a small I, business. And I don't post on Facebook at all. Because right. like, I have... I even find Facebook funny sometimes, but I posted on that one because I was like, man, that, what a great shop. That shop had been there for a long time. A beautiful shop, a flagship Taylor store. But they're like, you know, it just doesn't make sense for us to continue. And they're in a great Fayetteville, Arkansas. Wonderful place. Check it out. Um, no, it's it's a strange moment right now. And that's why a lot of these shops are closing. Now, what you're going to see, we talked about before, is you're going to see a lot of this happen. The strong shops will survive that. The ones that choose to fight through this, the manufacturers might come back to understanding like this is a really bad choice for us to get like a tiny bit of that market share and cost us everything. Right. Cause it, the, you know, it's just, it's just a whole different game. What are they thinking? What else do you think, Johnny? I do not know. I just think it's a strange time <laughs> to be, to be in the game of moving guitars, but it's okay. But see, like, the, the sad part is like, we still really love it. Like we come mm -hmm. into work every day. A new guy just started today too. That's going to be like part of the team that we don't really know what he'll do. I think we're going to have him working on plumbing primarily and like, and just fix the pipes and things. But no, it's, we love it. We love helping people find guitars. We had a great gentleman come in yesterday from a few hours away. He found a great custom shop. I remember I got to spend personal time with him at least an hour to two hours of hanging out with him. It was the best part of my day. Yeah. It was so much fun. We, you spent hours on the phone yesterday. Yes. Meeting new people across the country. We shipped multiple guitars across the world in the past you know, few weeks. Meeting people everywhere. I mean, I think that's the hope there is that just people love guitars too much for it to <laughs> devolve to where it's just all impersonal and all online. Like people, they, they, they build communities around this stuff. So there is a community. Eventually, I believe it'll all come back around. I think the manufacturers do come back around. Everything sort of works in cycles anyways. I do, but um, stay strong. Like help right. those local shops. We're not yes. pitching to us. Like if there's a local shop that you don't want to see go out of business, don't go in there 
and like, you know, price check them to Sweetwater and like, and just and like, well, I'm going to buy from Sweetwater. If you do do that, give them a chance to match that, you know, just to help them, like help them survive. These shops have been there for you for 30, 40 years sometimes. Yeah. Like just support them. It's awesome. Like I go to every local guitar shop when I'm in a different town. I, I yeah, I usually make that a practice to go. And I try, and I try to out. And I, I at least to say hello and maybe hopefully buy a little something too. Yeah. Buy a t-shirt, buy a hat. Every little bit helps. And just support the community and like have fun with it. Like shops can be really, really, really fun. Even the big ones you think are scary, like Chicago Music Exchange, is not. It's super cool and fun. They are super cool. And everything's amazing. And you just want to live there. And they can let, actually let you live there if you work there. Oh. They have cots in the basement. They all sleep there. And we do. Let you just sleep in one of the little demo rooms, you know? No, they don't let you yeah. do that. That's for, that's for the um, the guests. They, they're they like having bunks more. That's fine. So what movie are we watching this week? We already talked about Tiptoes the other day. I have to watch that with Derek. We got some more movies coming up. Have you seen the new Dune trailer yet? I have. I'm very excited about that. When does that actually drop? I think like, this fall, I hope. Okay. A lot, uh, my son is very excited about the new Spider-Verse movie. I don't, I, it's going to be good. I don't know if I, I'm not that excited about it for some reason. No. The first one was cute. It was. He was cute. I just, you know. And then Derek oh, just saw The yes. Flash. That was pretty darn good, too. He said, you know, was his favorite. He said it was better than the, the reviews have made it out to be because they're, they're pretty abysmal. Guardians of the Galaxy was great. The third one. It was a great movie. Good little wrap up. Yeah. You know? That's kind of also on the template right now, but we're going to check out Tiptoes later this week. Oh. I need therapy. Oh, God. I'm going to get a, a full report of how, how good Diablo 4 is from Baxter. I've been definitely doing it. James moment. just finished the campaign. Yeah. Um, I haven't let him tell me much about it. The, the ultimate battle between, like, you know, Lilith and the other angel. Yeah. Some 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 crooked angels in this thing, but it's a funny. I got a lot of hours in it now, and I'm wasting a ton of time dungeon crawling. I need okay. to stop. I'm so, I'm so, I don't even really know the. Don't do it. The, uh, just wait. The story arc. It's things. amazing. You fight demons. Is it the same through all the games? Like, is it a continuation? No, I mean, kind of, yeah, 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 it does. It's definitely in the same world and it's fun. But anyway, that's all we got. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks for like spending time with us every day that you do. It every means a lot, day. especially if you're on the bathroom on your way to work. That means a lot too, because it's dangerous in both situations. Bathroom time is like prime time. If anyone gives us like their poop time, yeah, it's like, I mean, like, well, there's really a lot of things fine for like, your hats attention. Hats off to that one. Yeah, no, that makes me feel good. <laughs> you on TikTok, on Facebook. Honored. No, you're gonna have Johnny and back. If you're, if you're gonna sit there, take well, your time while the turtle comes to say hello hey, to the sun. Hey, Amen. <laughs> I know how it is. No, it, it, does, it does mean a lot. Thanks. If you've ever shopped with us, like, thank you very oh. much. If you ever shop with any of our, like, I'm gonna call them partner friends out there from Wildwood Guitars to Sims to Tobias Music, to Music Villa, to Chuck Levins, to all these great shops across the country. I just met a new one in Minneapolis, I believe. Where did I have that? Oh my God, Twin Town Guitars. Twin Town. I was on, that shop looks amazing. It does look amazing. It looks, look at the outside it's of cool. it. You know, it was like that. Like reminds, it, it reminds me a lot of our shop. Like the, the yeah. owner is super cool. If you're ever, anywhere near Twin Town Guitars, check it out. His, his family works there. Where is it again? Uh, I think up in Minneapolis. Cool. Let me pull it up. Uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. You're right there. Yeah, yeah. They're open right now. They close at six o'clock. Hence the Twin Town. I get it. No. Now I get it. No, but it's it's like we were talking about this whole music union thing a little bit too. Like, and I love there's a bunch of us that want to like do something to make sure like you know this this community survives. Not just the business, the community of it. We love it, and I love meeting these cats. I okay. I can't wait to. I'm in Minneapolis. I'm going there. He's gonna buy me all the Minneapolis corn fritters I want. No, done. I don't know if that's a thing. I sold that up. That's it. I'm done. That's all I got. Thank you again. Peace be with you all. See you next time. To all a good night.